Hello, and welcome to New England Escapades. Today we visited the House of Seven Gables in Salem, Massachusetts. Here's what we learned on our adventure. Best known from the Nathaniel Hawthorne novel of the same name, the House of Seven Gables is perhaps the most famous building in Salem, Massachusetts. Also known as the Turner House, or Turner Ingersoll Mansion, its construction began in 1668 and continued periodically throughout the next century or so throughout numerous expansions. The initial section of the House of Seven Gables was built in 1668 by Captain John Turner. It remained in his family for three generations and faced south towards Salem Harbor. It was originally a two-room, two-and-a-half-story house with a massive central chimney. This portion now forms the middle of the house. Four windows of the original ground floor room, now the dining room, remain in the house's side wall. A few years later, a kitchen lean-to and a new north kitchen L to the rear of the house were added. By 1676, Turner had added a spacious south extension with its own chimney, containing a parlor on the ground floor, with a large bedchamber above it. The new wing featured a three-gabled garret. After John Turner III lost the family fortune, Captain Samuel Ingersoll, a wealthy ship captain, purchased the property. He oversaw several alterations to the house in the name of modernization throughout the years, rendering it nearly unrecognizable to the home as it once stood. After his death in 1804, his daughter Susanna Ingersoll inherited the property. Miss Ingersoll was the second cousin of Nathaniel Hawthorne. Hawthorne was infamous for being reclusive during his time living in Salem, in part because Hawthorne himself exaggerated his reputation. Hawthorne was occasionally entertained in the house by Susanna, but she told him the house's history and showed him beams and mortises in the attic indicating locations of former gables. Hawthorne was more inspired by the way Seven Gables sounded than what the house looked like. As he wrote in a letter, the expression was new and struck me forcibly. I think I shall make something of it. The idea inspired Hawthorne's novel The House of the Seven Gables. In writing the book, Hawthorne compared the process to constructing an actual house. In January 1851, he wrote to his publisher James T. Field that the book was nearly finished. Only I am hammering away a little on the roof and doing a few odd jobs that were left incomplete. The House of the Seven Gables was published in April 1851. In 1908, the house was purchased by Caroline O. Emerton, founder of the House of Seven Gables Settlement Association from 1908 to 1910. The house was restored as a museum whose admission fees would support the association. Boston architects Joseph Everett Chandler supervised their restoration, which among other alterations reconstructed the missing gables. In some cases, historical authenticity was sacrificed in the interest of appealing to visitors, who expected the house to match the one Hawthorne described in his romantic novel. For example, Emerton added a scent shop, resembling that operated by the author's fictional character Hepzibah Pynchon. She also added what looks like a wood closet, but has a false back. When opened, the back leads to a secret staircase, which leads up to the attic. Today, the House of the Seven Gables encompasses a property featuring several buildings, as well as a beautiful garden, and it sits right at the edge of the harbor facing Marblehead. There are regular tours that give much more information on the house than we ever could, as well as access to the grounds. Each October, an event called Spirits of the Gables is performed in the house. Actors appear in various rooms of the house, with each providing a piece of Hawthorne's story. It's a fun and different way to experience the house, as well as the literature that it inspired. Located at 115 Derby Street in Salem, Massachusetts, the House of the Seven Gables is about a 40-minute drive from Boston. It's a great place to visit and enjoy the history and views, though we'd recommend planning for extra driving time if you plan to visit in October. Thank you for watching, and keep on adventuring!